Do you ever just think about why God would choose to love you, to love me? Well, my name is Ricky White. I'm pastor of Havenwoods Baptist Church. And today I want to take just a few minutes to talk to you uh, from a subject I've just entitled this message, Even Me. That God would so love even me, even you, regardless of where we've been or what we've done, God is on record for his love for you and I. Today, I want you to take your Bibles, if you will, and turn with me to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, and verses 12 through 17. And as you're finding that, I just want to remind you that what we're going to be talking about today is a letter that Paul, who is, uh, uh, who is grounded in his faith, who has walked with God for a while at this point, is writing this letter to a young preacher boy named Timothy. Now, Paul has taken Timothy uh, under his wings, if you will. He has, has mentored him in ministry. And, and Paul wants to, in this letter, write to Timothy and say, hey, I want you to understand where I've come from, what God has done in my life. And, and so today we're going to look at three uh, aspects of this letter that Paul writes to young Timothy to encourage him and also to encourage you and I today about the incredible love that God has for you and I. So we're going to read 1 Timothy chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 12 through 17 together, okay? The Bible says, And I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. However, for this reason, I obtained mercy, that in, my fir in me first Jesus Christ might show all longsuffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you join me in prayer right now? Father, I pray today as we spend these few minutes together today that, Lord, you would speak to our heart in a powerful way about the incredible love of God that even me, even those who are watching by video right now, that your love is not uh, inconsequential. God, that your love can reach every one of us. Your grace and mercy is sufficient to meet every one of us who would come to you with a repentant heart. God, we thank you so much for that. We ask God for you to speak to our hearts right now to, to bless and encourage and challenge us to receive the love that you have for us and then in turn to share that love with others around us. For us in your name we pray, amen and amen. Well, the three things I want you to see from this passage today, the first one is this, that you and I, if we want to receive the love and forgiveness of God, we number one must recognize our sin. Recognize our sin. Back there in verse 13 of 1 Timothy chapter 1, Paul writes and says, Although I was formerly a blasphemer, in other words, he, 
He cursed God. He lived contrary to God's plan for his life. He was a persecutor. The Bible tells in several places where Paul was there for the persecution of the Christians. As a matter of fact, when he had his conversion experience with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, he was on his way to go and persecute Christians. And then he says he was an insolent man. Now, the dictionary tells us that that word insolent means violently arrogant. In other words, he was a proud person. He was one of those that strutted around letting everybody see who he was and what he had done. And, and th that's who he was. And, and he says uh, that, that he acknowledged his sin before God. Even after his conversion, he was reminded of just what a, a difficult, evil person he was. And friend, the point for you and I today is that we need, even if you're watching this right now and you know that you're saved, you know that you have come to save in faith in Jesus Christ, that friend, you need to remember what God saved you from. But you may be watching this right now and you may say, well, what do you mean I'm a sinner? What does that even look like? Well, in Romans chapter three, there's two verses that the Bible gives us speaking about our sin. The first one is Romans 3.23. You've probably heard it before, but it says this, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What that means to us is that every one of us or sinners. And you may say, well, what does that mean? Well, for us to call ourselves a sinner means that we have disobeyed God. We have dishonored God in our lives. And the Bible says that we were born into this world into a life of sin. And so Jesus came to, and I love that, that verse there. He says, Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If we were all good and righteous, if we were all right before God, we wouldn't have needed a savior. But the other verse in Romans 3 verse 10, it says this, it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That's why when somebody says, well, surely that person will go to heaven because they're such a good person. Friend, the Bible says that there are none of us. Now, we may be outwardly good. We may treat other people kindly and fairly. But friend, in our heart, we are not good. Why? Because we are ruled by our flesh. And our flesh is contrary to to everything that God wants to do in our, in our hearts spiritually. So sin is what separates us from God. Again, that's why Jesus came to this earth was to die for sinners, to make us right with God. And you may be watching this right now and you may say, well, I'm a, a church member. You may be a, a member of multiple churches. I've been baptized. You may have been baptized multiple times. You may say, well, I walked the aisle. And you may have walked the aisle multiple times. But God is much more concerned about your heart. Have you called out to Jesus and asked him to come into your heart and life and save you and forgive you of your sin? Have you asked God to help you repent of your sin? And what that means is, is that we turn away from our sin. That we don't just say, God, I'm sorry that I got caught, but God, I don't want to do that again. God, change my heart. Come into my heart and soul. Forgive me and be my Savior and my Lord. Paul readily admitted, you know what? I was a sinner. I was lost without Jesus. Again, those three descriptive words that he gives there. He was a blasphemer. 
He said he was a persecutor and he was an insolent man. Those are all descriptors of a lost person, someone who doesn't know Jesus. Friend, I would just ask you today, do you acknowledge that you're a sinner? Or do you recognize the depth of your sin? That, that we are, are, are lost without Christ. We are hopeless without Christ. You know, I, I love the old word that is used for that. We are depraved. In other words, we are hopeless uh, apart from Jesus. And, and, and friend, we all need to understand that we are sinners in the eyes of a holy God. But the good news is, even you, even I, we can be forgiven for our sin. And that leads to the second point that I want you to see that Paul is writing to Timothy here about. The second thing that he says is that we must receive God's mercy. So first we must recognize our sin, but then secondly, we must receive God's mercy. Look there in the second part of verse 13 and 1 Timothy 1. He, he says, I, I was a blasphemer, I was a persecutor, I was an insolent, violently arrogant man. And then he says, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He says, I received mercy. I blasphemed God, I persecuted Christians, but even I, could receive mercy from a holy God. Look on down there in verse uh, 14. He goes on and he says, And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. He says, The grace and mercy of Jesus was abundant. It, it was available to me. And friend, the good news is that same grace, that same mercy that was available to Paul is available to you and I today. Man, I'm so glad at the age of 18, a senior in high school, that I it recognized my sin. Again, I'd done a lot of religious stuff. I just didn't know Jesus. And, and even me, Jesus died for him. The, even me. Jesus extended his grace and mercy to me. Now, those are two very important words that we need to, to just be reminded of what that means to us today. The first word is mercy. Mercy is God withholding what we deserve. I deserve hell because of my sin. I deserve to be separated eternally from God, but God didn't give me what I deserved. He showed mercy. He withheld what I deserved. But the other word is grace. And grace is God giving me what I don't deserve. Well, what did he give me? Through Jesus Christ, he gives me eternity in heaven rather than eternity in hell. Through what Jesus did for me, he gave me grace and given me love and peace. And hope. See, he, it, rather than giving me justice, and, and so many times you hear in our society today, people begging for justice. We just want justice. Friend, I tell you, we don't want justice from God. We want mercy. We want God to withhold what we deserve. And we need grace, which means that God gives us what we don't deserve. We don't deserve to be called children of God. We don't deserve a, an eternal home in heaven. We don't deserve an abundant life that Jesus says in John 10, 10, that he came to give us. Yet he gave it anyway. Then look down in verse 16. He says, however, for this reason, I obtained mercy that in me first, 
Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. He says, I was just the first fruit of the work that God wanted to do. That he received God's mercy. I wrote here in my notes that God's judgment is always the result of mercy that was offered and refused. See, friend, at, at one day when you die or when Jesus returns to this earth and you stand before a holy God, if you receive eternal judgment, it's because you were offered mercy and you rejected it. You wouldn't receive the mercy of God. And here I am again today on this video telling you God is merciful. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. God's mercy and grace can reach out to you today. And friend, today you can be what the Bible says is a new creation in Christ Jesus. It is possible not because of what you have done or who you are, but because of what God has done and just how much God loves you. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Friend, that's just how much he loves us, that he has given us a living hope. Why? Because he shows mercy. You may have had people in your life who have been harsh towards you, who have been judgmental and condemning towards you, but friend, I want you to know that's not who our God is. Our God is patient. He is merciful. He is kind. He is graceful. He shows us his grace in our daily lives. And friend, today, his mercy can reach out to you. I love years ago, there was a song by Phillips, Craig, and Dean. And, and the, the title of the song was Mercy Came Running. And it just spoke about how God's love comes running to us. His mercy comes running to us. So it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. Even you, even me, today we can call on Jesus and receive his faithful love reaching out to us. And then the third and final thing I want you to see from this letter that Paul wrote to Timothy is that we need to remember God is faithful to forgive. You know, so much of my counseling time with Christians is dealing with people who are saved. They know they're saved, but they have sinned and we all are. We're going to fail. We're going to mess up. But when we sin, we believe that that we've just gone too far. Or we believe that because we have sinned, we need to get saved again, or we need to give our life to Jesus again. And the Bible is clear. Once you give your life to Christ, friend, you are saved and you are forever saved. Now, again, there's a lot of people that want to bring up, well, that's just a license to sin. No, it's not a license to sin. It's just the truth that God loves you so much that when he, he, Jesus died on the cross for you, he said one death once and for all is sufficient to die for you because if you could be saved today and sin tomorrow and lose that salvation, how is that eternal life? How is that everlasting life? But see, the, the fact is, friend, if you really know Jesus, you're not going to go out and just do what you want, when you want, how you want, with no regard for God. That's why my heart is so heavy for lost church members, that, that we don't have people in our churches every Sunday that 
you know, knew Jesus and lost their salvation and went out and did their own thing. No, they never knew Christ to begin with. If they knew Christ to begin with, they wouldn't have the heart to just rebel, you know, just to repeated, repeatedly sin over and over and over again. And I've talked to people that's, well, I know I'm saved, but I can go out and sin, do what I want to, and there's no conviction there. Friend, if there's no conviction there, there's no Savior there. So we've got to be able to say, God, when I sin, I need to come back to the Lord and say, God, forgive me. The greatest verse in the Bible related to that is 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9 where the Bible simply says this, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just. God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh friend, that is good news because that means that whenever I'm away from God, when I have drifted away from him, when I don't have the fellowship with him that I used to, when I mess up and, and fail in my, my Christian walk, that I can come back to God and say, God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. And that verse right there says, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what that means is God is faithful to forgive us when we fail. As you're watching this right now, is there something going on in your heart that maybe you have compromised your faith? Maybe you, you've given in to some sin in your life? And maybe today you need to just call out to Jesus and say, God, I need your forgiveness. I'm so sorry I did that. I'm so sorry I said that. I'm so sorry I thought that. Whatever it may be, do you need to call out to God today? Well, as we close, I want to share a story with you about a man. It was back in 1829. There were two men named George Wilson and James Porter. They robbed a United States mail carrier. Uh, both were subsequently captured and tried in court uh, in a court of law. In May of 1830, both men were found guilty of six charges, including robbery of the mail and putting the life of the driver in jeopardy. Both Wilson and Porter received their sentences. The sentences were to be executed by hanging, to be carried out on July the 2nd. Porter was executed on schedule, but Wilson, George Wilson, was not. He had influential friends who pleaded for mercy to the President of the United States at the time, who was Andrew Jackson. President Jackson issued a formal pardon dropping all charges. Wilson would have to serve only a prison term of 20 years for his other crimes. But incredibly, George Wilson refused the pardon. Now the president said, after you serve those 20 years, you can be free to go, you could go and do your own thing. And George Wilson said, no, I'm not going to take the pardon. Well, this was so controversial that it ended up going to the Supreme Court of the United States to say, here are people who are pleading for his life, saying, please let him go. The president makes the decision to say, hey, after you serve these 20 years, you'll be free to go. And George Wilson said, no, I won't receive that pardon. Now this is the ruling of the Supreme Court. I want you to hear this today. They, they uh, determined and, and their Chief Justice John Marshall wrote this in their final report. He said, a pardon is an act of grace 
proceeding from the power entrusted with the execution of the laws. But delivery is not completed without acceptance. It may then be rejected by the person to whom it is tendered, and we have no power in a court to force it on him. Now you may say, well, what's that got to do with what Paul's writing here? It's got everything to do with it. Because friend, you today and I have been offered a pardon. A pardon from the penalty of our sin. The Bible says in, uh, in Romans that uh, for by grace are you saved. You're saved through faith and by grace. Not that anything that we have done, but, but the reason that that is so important is because the Bible says the wages of our sin in Romans 6, 23, the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Friend, today I offer you pardon. Today I offer you forgiveness. Today, I offer you the opportunity to receive the grace and mercy of God that is reaching out to you right now. And if you would call out to God today, friend, you could receive and accept the pardon. But just as the Supreme Court could not fake, uh, force this pardon on George Wilson, friend, I can't and God won't force his pardon on you. You must receive it. You must accept it. You must be willing to say, I'm lost and dying without Christ. And today I realize I'm a sinner and I need a savior. And call out to Jesus. The Bible says, if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. So as we close today, I just want to mention this feat to faith to you. How do we apply what we've just read and what we've just heard today? Our feat to faith is this. God can forgive and save you. He really can. But the question is, will you receive his gift? The Bible says salvation is a free gift of God. And today you can call on Jesus and receive him as your savior. Would you just bow your head with me right now, wherever you are watching from? And let me just ask you, is God speaking to your heart today? Is this the day that God has appointed for you to trust Jesus as your savior and Lord? I want you to know God so loves you that he sent Jesus into this dirty, filthy world. To, to, to live a perfect, sinless life. And friend, today, if you would call on Jesus, if you would accept the fact that he came here, he died for you, he was buried for you, and he rose again for you on the third day, and just surrender your heart and life to him, today, friend, you can be saved. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed right now, if God's speaking to your heart and telling you today, you need to give your life to Jesus. I'm just going to ask you, would you call out to God right now? Just say a simple prayer like this to God today. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. And I ask you today to forgive me of my sin. I know you died for me. I know you were buried for me. And I know you rose again for me. And I ask you now, come into my heart. Save my soul and be my savior. Change me from the inside out and I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Friend, if you just prayed that prayer, Right now, the Bible is absolutely true. If we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, friend, you 
are saved. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And, and I just want to rejoice with you. I just want to praise God for his work in your life today. And, and here's how we do that. I'd love for you to, to find somebody today and go and tell them, I just want you to know today, I prayed and gave my heart and life to Jesus. I would love for you to send me an email at just rickywatt at gmail.com and just say, Ricky, today, I just want you to know, I called out and gave my heart and life to Jesus. Hey, we will celebrate with you. We'll send you a Bible if you don't have one. We'll send you materials to help you grow in your faith. And you may say, well, I don't live in the area. I'm not able to come to your church. That does not matter. We will minister to you as best we can, however, wherever you are. Uh, and, and we just want to know what God's doing in your life. But you may be watching this today and you may say, Ricky, I know I'm saved. But, but I, I'm, I'm not experiencing that forgiveness, that faithful forgiveness from God. It may feel like that you're so far away from the Lord today. Well, again, I want to remind you, he is faithful to forgive. And today you can call out to him. You can allow him to, to draw you back into that sweet fellowship with God that he wants you to have today. Would you just pray with me right now? Father, I pray for every brother and sister who's watching this video right now that God, today, we would remember your word that says you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sin when we confess it to you. And, and Lord, not only that, but you will cleanse us. You, you will forgive us. You will cleanse us from all our unrighteousness and our sin. Oh God, I pray you give us a fresh start today by the power of your spirit to walk with you, to grow in you, to serve you the way that you want us to. Lord, I'm so thankful today that you were able to save even me. That God, you were able to forgive even me. And Lord, I pray you'd help us walk in victory as we walk with you daily. For it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. As always, I want to remind you if you have a prayer need, if there's any way we can pray for you, if, if there's anything that uh, maybe a, a ministry that you need uh, of the Lord in your heart and life, uh, please feel free to send me an email, rickywatt at gmail.com. We want to love you. We want to serve you. We want to encourage you, okay? And so uh, we look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you and have a great day.